Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. For his namesake. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Michael. Nothing is too difficult for our miracle working God. Amen. Oh, I think that's so powerful. That is so powerful. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is impossible with our miracle working God. We're just going to wait a few more seconds for to log on and join us. And we're going to start. Amen, amen. I walk in my miracle. That's my confession today. I am working in my miracle. I claim total victory in Jesus' name. I claim total victory in every area of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible for our God. Hallelujah. We are going to go ahead and start. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before I start, let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We confess and proclaim that you are a miracle working God. Nothing is impossible with you, Father. And as we come in your presence this morning, we are expecting, we are expecting to see your face to feel you, to hear from you, God. And I pray, Lord God, that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, oh God. I pray, Father God, that as we come in your presence, when we go out, Father, I pray that we'll be transformed, we'll be challenged, we'll go away with nuggets of truth that we can use and apply in our daily lives, oh God, because we want to be doers of the word, not just hearers, because we know that it's by doing, that you are not only that you are pleased, but is that that's how the kingdom of God uh, grows, as how the kingdom of God spreads. So, Father, we are committed to you. We are committed to the mission. We are committed to the kingdom of God. And Lord, we just uh, ask that you go before us today and make all the crooked places straight. We commit our everything that pertains to our lives, Father, in your holy hands, in your mighty, capable hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, for those of you who don't know me, let me just again introduce myself. <laughs> I've been doing, I actually forgot to introduce myself yesterday, but um, my name is Lydia and I am uh, Miss Lois' assistant. So I'm filling in for her this week as she's away. And I was talking to her last night and she sent her love and she said, you know, tell my people that I say hi to them. I'm sending my love to them and that I miss them, uh, and she said she can't wait to see you, and she said uh, if you could, she has an exciting news that she wants, an exciting announcement that she wants to share uh, with you, so if you could tune in on Saturday, August 11th, uh, at 11, no, at noon, 12 noon, Eastern Standard Time, she will be live, because she'll be sharing some exciting news, amen. So that is uh, the message from Miss Lois, and she says she misses everybody and can't wait to see you very soon. 
So today's confession, 8, 9, 2018, is my children are wise and make me glad. That is in Proverbs 10, um, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. And then the children's confession is I listen to my father's instructions and I don't reject my mother's teachings. Oh, I love Proverbs. They have such um, incredible truth in the book of Proverbs. So that was uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. So that's today's confessions. And you can also find that on, on the wall as well. So we're going to get right into it. Today we're going to talk about... Um, we, yesterday we covered biblical accounts of testimonies of children who chose to honor their parents. They chose to, um, you know, obey God's instruction and God's commandments that honor your father and your mother. And they and they and the benefits of it because it's always um, benefits to obedience. So today we're going to look on the flip side of children uh, in the Bible who chose to dishonor their parents and what what the ramifications and what the consequences were. So the base scripture for this week is um, I've actually been saying is Exodus five sixteen. It's not Exodus. It's uh, Deuteronomy five sixteen. And uh, it says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord God, as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And I've been saying that this is the, the only commandment with a promise to it. That if you do this, this is if you honor your mother and your father, this is what God will do. You're, you have a long life and your life is going to be blessed. You're going to have a blessed, a long life, You're going to live well into the old age amen but that also means that if you do not honor your father and your mother um you your life may be cut short and you're going to have a difficult life and i was saying the other day that could this be the reason why we have so many young people uh dying so young nowadays because um we know that it's, I mean, even older people, we have older children, obviously, who disrespect their parents, but we know that the younger generation nowadays, they really have no, it's, it's incredible the level of disrespect that they show their parents. And, um, and, and I was talking about how in my home country, this is such an epidemic now. Young people are not only killing themselves, they are killing each other. Um, there's this relationship thing going on, they call it... Um, <clears throat> um they have a name for it but yeah when you know relationship go wrong and there's a breakup and uh, some one of the person just cannot accept that the relationship is over so they just the other day just just you know you know in the neighborhood uh close to where my parents live there was a um a, a shooting a young woman she had broken up with her boyfriend and uh she went to the police and and reported him that you know this is what's going on um I, I i need protection but the police didn't do anything right away the very next morning the shop is just very close to where my parents live so to my parents neighborhood the young man the young lady went to work in the morning she was 23 years old the young woman she went to work that morning and um the boyfriend showed up there with a gun. He was a police officer. Showed up there with a gun. Shot her in the head. Shot himself. That was it. But we hear about this type of things in my home country every other day. Every week there's something going on about a young person killing another young person because of this relationship thing. Or because they were they just got into a silly fight about just silly, 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 silly just senseless. And we know we're in the last days, but my God, we have to be vigilant. We have to be vigilant in this very trying and turbulent times. Amen. So um, I'm going to read, you know, yeah, speaking of the last days, speaking of the last days, the Bible warns us of how things are going to be in the last days. So 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And I always, I continuously read the scripture just to, because we see these things in our daily life now. It's, it's people that, people that we know in our lives, that we see, that we interact with, they do things that we never even expected. You're like, oh my gosh, I never thought he or she would do something like that. And um, the Lord says, I have warned you that you will not be shocked, you will not be surprised when these things actually do happen. 
So the scripture says, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. Oh my gosh. A person without self-control is a very dangerous person. Brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. Let me back up a little bit. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of them or of or rather than lovers of God. One time the Lord said to me, Lydia, people that choose sin over me, or that uh, people that choose to live in sin, it 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 um uh, it means that they love sin more than they love me. I was shocked. I mean, my heart was just broken when the Lord said that to me. I was like, that is true, God. And that, that is very true. People choose a life of selfishness, ungratefulness, disobedience, uh, recklessness, just living in sin, not lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of themselves. But we know that this uh, pleasure is only momentarily anyway because there will be consequences, whether in this lifetime or in the next life to come. It's going to be the same. And disobedient, being disobedient to parents is so, uh, to God is the same as somebody who's treacherous or considered uh, without self-control, slanderous. It is a very serious sin. And um, having a form of godliness by denying its power, I feel like I needed to, to, to um, expand a little bit on that because the Lord gave me a revelation on that. He said, what that means is that because you see the power of god the holy spirit has the power to transform life that's he, he doesn't he, he does not just have the power to transform he that's actually his job to transform lives like when the holy spirit comes in your life you are supposed to be transformed if you let yourself be transformed but many people even though they're in the church they say they want to follow God, you know, and we know, and we know people like this. I think all of us know people like this who have one foot in one foot. I say, oh, I really want to follow the Lord. I really want to follow the Lord. And then they come to church on Sunday. And then for the rest of the week, they are back to the same thing, back to the same thing. Those are people that having a form of godliness, talking, they know how to talk Christianese and they know how to quote the Bible but they deny the power of God. That means they don't allow the Holy Spirit to transform them. Even to obey your parents and to honor your parents takes um, the Holy Spirit coming in and changing our hearts. You see, it takes the Holy Spirit coming in and changing our hearts in order and empowering us in order for us to uh, obey the commandments of God. But in the last days, people are lovers of themselves lovers of money boastful proud abusive and this abuse is a big one too people are <laughs> oh gosh people are abusing their parents i never even knew this was happening but in the recent years i have come across stories i come across people talking about people that were being abused by their own children we have laws that protect um uh, children from parents I'm starting to think that we need to come up with laws that protect parents from children too I know of a lady who the the they had to take her kids away uh, two boys were those boys twins no they were not twins um, two boys they had to take them away into the foster system because they were abusing them they were literally beating their mom I mean um, the other day uh, in my home country, I mean, this story just really broke my heart. So this young man, he was having problems with his, um, with his girlfriend, living girlfriend. And I guess he was always abusing her. And the mom tried to intervene at some point, but then that didn't go very well. So there was a day that he was beating her. And the mom 
came over trying to protect the you know she said she wasn't even trying to she was just like you know pleading with him please stop abusing your girlfriend please stop abusing your girlfriend you know what the young man did the young man took a panga you know there's um i don't know what is the panga in english like this long uh like a sword and he totally cut his mom to pieces he cut his mom to pieces simply because she was pleading with him to stop abusing his girlfriend and we hear the stories frequently now people abusing their parents this has to stop not only it's it's oh i, I mean i i'm trying not to get emotional about this because for me it's uh it's 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 just the worst kind of evil it's 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 very evil but um when we yield ourselves you know oh yeah so before i even go there so the, the the last sentence say have nothing to do with such people because you see we are the people of god and i'm always saying we should be the trailblazers even if you come in the, from the family where disrespect and abuse is the norm is the order of the day even if your parents abused you even if the the the, the, the situation is it's you can always be the first one to start doing things differently and the other day i was saying that um when we honor one of the ways that we can honor our parents when i was covering ways to honor our parents especially for grown-up children is not just to forgive if your parents have done things um you know they have abused you or they've done things to you that were not good you should not just forgive them but seek reconciliation if possible if it's safe if it's not safe Definitely, that's not a wise thing to do. You just forgive them and you try, you stay away and you pray for them from a distance. But if it's possible, seek reconciliation because God is always looking for somebody to stand in the gap, somebody who's brave enough to say, God, use me. Use me to bring change to my family. Use me to show my parents who don't know you, who never knew you, my siblings, whoever, my family. I come from a dysfunctional family. Use me to show um, the right way. We are, are ch as children, we can be the light to our parents for um, to show them the, 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 how things are done in the kingdom of God or what God's will is by honoring them. And even if your parents are rude to you, even if you, we, j we might just keep on asking for um, grace from the Lord. Because at the end, the Lord has shown me this so clearly. He said, at the end of the day, God is good. It's the, the, the curse will come upon the child. That's why as children, we must always, no matter how old you are, we must always be seeking reconciliation. We must always be seeking peace. The Bible says we must try to live at peace with all men. And I think our parents definitely are at the top of the list are somewhere, you know, not the, exactly at the top top, but they are definitely priority to seek reconciliation, to live in peace with them where we can. And when things are very difficult, let us go on our knees and plead to the Lord, Lord, what do I do? How do I break through? How do I show my parents love or honor them in a way that, that they can perceive or that they can receive? I have tried this. It doesn't work. I tried this. It doesn't work. What can I do, Lord? Show me the way. This is why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables us to do things that we otherwise would not be able to do in our own strength. That's why he came. You know, people always say, the Lord will not give you more than you can handle. That's a lie. The Lord would definitely give us more than we can handle. That's the whole point of the cross. So that when we come to the end of ourselves, God will take over from there. And at the end of the day, he will get glory. Amen. So in the Old Testament, in the Old and God's law is still the same, although now we are under grace, but the 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 the, the, um, the consequences are still basically the same. In the Old Testament, this is what, what the, the scriptures had to say about or oh, this is how what happened to children that were disobedient to their parents. So Deuteronomy 21, chapter 21, verse 18 to 21. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son or daughter who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gates of his town. 
they shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his town of his town are to stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of this and be afraid. Now, in the under grace, we might not exactly um, have people stoning people. We don't stone people anymore. But what does the, the, the commandment say? Honor your father and your mother as the Lord God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you. So if you do not, the consequences still stand of death. If you do not, if we do not honor our parents or we, dis we dishonor them, we di do not obey, our lives will be cut short. So death is still very much in the play. It just comes out differently. It's just played out differently. But it's basically saying the same thing. In the Old Testament, they stoned people right there on the spot. Nowadays, just the curse will come upon us, different circumstances will happen, and we'll, we'll, our lives will be cut short. This is God's commandment, and it is serious. And I always say, God's commandments are not negotiable. God is not looking for opinions. He's not looking for our input. What he wants is obedience from us. And when the, the circumstances surrounding our situation is so hard that we feel like we can't do it, that's when we need to get on our knees and pray, say, God, enable me to do what I cannot do on my own. Enable me to forgive what I cannot forgive. What happened was too much, but God, I know that you commanded me to honor my father and my mother. So help me to get over my, my, over my circumstances. Help me to get over my pain. Help me to heal. And God is able. God is able. Now we're going to look at two testimony, testimonies or accounts of uh, children who, <laughs> who, dis, who chose to dishonor their parents. First, Luke 15, the story of the, uh, the prodigal son. Let me just give some background information on this story. So there was a man who had two sons. There was a father who had two sons. One was a younger one, was an older one. So the younger one, um, he decided to go his, to his dad. He decided, and you know, this young one must have been really young because he, the, the, both of the sons must have been young because they were still living at home with their dad, with their parents. So this was not, I don't think these were grown children. So they were still living under the direct command, the direct um, authority of their parents. Amen? And we are, again, told to obey our parents. Not, so this is the story. Not long after that, the younger son got all together he had. So he went to his father and, and said, you know, please, can you give me my inheritance? Can you give me what is due to me? I mean, I, I need to go. <laughs> I, I, I need to go. I need to go and, and do my own life. I don't know what was going on at home, but he, he felt that he was better off going on off and doing what he wanted to do. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. This is what disobedience will do. A person who is disobedient, a person without self-control, a person who loves themselves, who does not love God, who loves pleasure more than they love God, will end up spending squandering their lives in wild living this is what this is where disobedience will lead you when you're disobedient to your parents you end up squandering your life and your wealth everything in wild living this is what disobedience does after he has spent everything there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. In other words, he was desperate. He had to hit rock. He, he, he hit rock bottom. Imagine, uh, um, imagine the life that this young man was living, having left behind his father, having disappointed his father, and uh, his whole family just went off and 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 started just living, doing whatever he wanted. So now he got desperate. He was in need. So he, but then, this is what I love always about um, the love of God. It's like 
as long as there is breath in us, we can always repent and turn. So this son has some sense in him. He knew how much his father loved him. You see? So what he decided was like, you know what? I'm going back home. Whatever the situation is going to be at home, it's going to be better than this. So I'm going home. Little did he know that his father was waiting for him. Even with all the dishonor that happened, the dishonor to the family name, to the way he treated his father, the way he dishonored his father, his father still loved him and was waiting for him. So when he got home, the father was waiting for him and really welcomed him. I mean, he had this whole, this young man, he had this whole speech uh, prepared about how he was going to, you know, say, oh, father, I'm so sorry. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just hire me as one of your servants. But that's not a father's heart. That's not a father's heart. Or well, at least that was not his father's heart. The father really, he, he, he missed his son and he wanted his father. So when his son came, he was just so glad. So he welcomed him. He hugged him and kissed him and um, threw a fist for him. Such a wonderful story of father's love, of repentance. I am glad, you know, I am so glad that this young man, he came to his senses before it was too late. Before he got caught up in drugs and 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 and, and gang violence and whatever, and you know him get end up getting killed or contracting some uh, fatal disease or virus or whatever, he was able to repent and go back home, and that's a wonderful story. But it was his disobedience, the way he decided to dishonor his parents, that landed him in that situation in the first place. The stories, this accounts in the Bible, and. They are written there for us so that we can learn from them and so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. When I look at that story, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be the, uh, I don't want to be that son. I just don't want to be that son. So I'm like, God, help me to follow your commandments. Help me to do what I need to do so that I can stay in right standing with you. So that I can continue being in right standing with you and being in right standing with my parents, obeying your commandments because I want to please you. My heart is to please you, Father. Not, uh, my heart is not for the pleasures of the world. You're giving me a second chance and I want to follow each and every of your commandments to the best of my ability. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the second account that we're going to look at today is... Uh, the what happened to uh, David and Absalom, his son. The Absalom, just to give you some uh, background information, this story is actually quite long, but I'm going to try and make it as short as possible, and I hope I'm going to get it right, or at least I'm going to get all the details correctly. So, I mean, correctly. So, um, David, Absalom was David's son, King David. At the time, uh, King David, he was already a king of, uh, of uh, Israel. He was reigning over Israel. So this son, Absalom, had a sister. I guess they were, yeah, they were, uh, so, uh, because David had multiple wives. So the this son, Absalom, had a sister, a full sister, by one of David's wives. And then there was another son that David had with, I guess, with another wife. His name was Amon. So Amon was Absalom's half-brother. And uh, Absalom's sister, um, half brother, girl, I, f I forgot the girl's name, I forgot the lady's name. Um, yeah, anyway, so we're just going to call her Absalom's sister. So, what happened was Amon started falling in love with his half sister, and um, one thing led to another, he ended up violating her and, and raping her. And, and you know, that time in the that time it was a big deal when i mean it was not just a big deal it was the the your life was over if you were not especially if you were raped but if you were not a virgin like if a man actually raped you he was forced to keep you as uh, um as his wife because nobody's going to want you nobody's going to want that person who has been raped so when he raped this woman she was like she was pleading with him to keep her because she knew her life was over she was going to be a desolate woman and uh, he just threw her out. He was very callous about it. Absolute, just absolutely crazy. So Absalom was very 
angry about this thing. Although he didn't say anything, he was very angry about it. The way um, uh, uh, his half-brother violated his sister. So he took his sister and then she stayed in his house for the rest of her life. You know, as a desolate woman, nobody wanted her because she was no longer a virgin. And she was raped. So Absalom just kept the matter to himself. And then uh, two years later, he conspired, came up with a plan. Uh, and he ended up killing Amon. Now, David, obviously, uh, this being his sons, this, this was a very difficult situation. And he knew, uh, and Absalom knew, you know, what the consequences might be, what his father might say or might do. So he ran away. And, you know, David mourned for his son. He was really grieved about the whole situation. His children are turning against each other and all this different. There was just a lot of chaos going on. So Absalom ran away and then he was away for two years. Was it even three? He was gone for three years. But then um, David forgave and he really started longing for his son. So through one of his uh, assistants, his like um, arm bearer, I think, David's arm bearer, his name was Joab. Job saw how David was longing for his son, but perhaps he just did not have the courage to come out and say, please, can you go get Absalom? So Job came up with a plan. Uh, he worked it out and finally... Um, um, he came up with a plan to try to bring Absalom back. So that happened and then Absalom came back. But then David didn't really want to see him. He was like, no, I, I'm not ready to see him. So he stayed, Absalom stayed for two years, you know, in the surrounding area in Israel. But he did not see his father. So, he, But he longed to see his father. So he finally requested, I really want to see my father. Why did you bring me here if he didn't want to see me? Why did he allow me to come back? So uh, they worked it out. Uh, Absalom was able to see his father and they started a relationship again. Things were kind of back to normal. But then Absalom's heart started getting, um, let us go back in the last days. People will be what? Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, considered lovers of pleasure than lovers of God. This um, works, of, uh, works of the flesh started taking over Absalom. This is what the Bible says. In the course of time, Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses and with 50 men to run ahead of him. You see how pride was coming in his heart? He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to the city gate. Whenever anyone came with a complaint to be placed before the king for decision, the king was his father, David, to be placed before the king for decision, Absalom would call out to him, What town are you from? He would answer, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your claims are valid and proper, but there is no representative of the king to hear you. <laughs> Oh, that see the devil working? And Absalom would add, If only I were appointed judge of the land, then everyone who had a complaint or case would come to me, and I would see that they receive justice. The Bible talks about the, uh, the one who flatters his neighbor. That should be right there. Flattery. Speaking words, gla you know, glazing their words with honey. Also, whenever, this is, this is Absalom speaking, also, whenever anyone approached him, oh no, this is not Absalom speaking, this is just a scripture, um, the text continuing. Also, whenever anyone approached him to bow down before him, Absalom, he, Absalom will reach out his hand, take hold of him, and kiss him. Like, oh no, you are way more important than I am. I'm here to serve you. Absalom behaved in this way toward all the Israelites who came to the king asking for justice. And so he stole the hearts of the people of Israel. And I always add, away from David, away from the king, away from his father. You see how this boy was honor, dishonoring his father. After the way his father forgave him, after the way the father um allowed him back and, and, and really showed him grace and, and forgave him and was trying to seek a, a reconciliation with him in a relationship with him. Then Absalom started uh, conspiring against his dad, like deliberately. He started conspiring against his dad. 
and there was a man that used to um yeah before i get to that so he started conspiring against his dad deliberately and then um he started you know telling everybody that you know i can be a better king to you i can do all these different things so the hearts of the people of israel were with absalom it came that he has such a huge following and people's heart were turned away from from david so now you could see what was happening now absalom decided to 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 he wanted to kill his father he wanted to absalom was the the takeover was happening now so david decided okay me and my people we have to flee otherwise we will never survive um what absalom is doing he's definitely he was going to kill his dad he wanted this throne my gosh this is this is dysfunctional on another level i'm telling you the things that the devil convinces people to do so david fleed with his people this man was the king of israel but he ended up in the desert hungry desolate he was walking around the desert uh with his you know they said he didn't even have shoes he didn't even have shoes he was now like a fugitive in his own land running away his father his own son was pursuing him wanting to kill him because he wanted the throne so what happened there was a man so all the people that used to serve uh, David they turned against him or some of the people turned against him and they started serving uh, Absalom and one of the, those men was Ahithophel this was uh, David's close counselor he was always giving him advice about what to do and they said they trusted in this man so much that when he spoke it was like uh, counsel from God they didn't question him so he turned now David realized he was in trouble because now Ahithophel was advising Absalom and Ahithophel always had such good advice so that's when David prayed and said Lord turn Ahithophel's um, advice into counsel into foolishness like you know confuse their tongues uh, cause com communication and miscommunication in the camp of the enemy so when David um, was now living you know running from place to place luckily he had people still in the in the in the back at the palace where Absalom was so they were kind of giving him information what was going on and then he would run from place to place they said no no you know move this way Absalom is coming you know to to look for you here and then he, they kept on running going from place to place so then one time came, uh, so Absalom was like, you know what? We need to go out and hunt this man down, uh, David, and kill, kill him. Like, I want to take over now. Then Ahithophel said, no, no, actually, it was Ahithophel who gave Absalom that advice. That this is what you need to do. You need to go out and uh, hunt for your father and kill him and just take over. They had another advisor. But remember, the, uh, David had prayed, Lord, turn Ahithophel's counsel into foolishness. So they had another counselor who they also trusted, Absalom also trusted. So he went to that counselor and said, this is what Ahithophel said, what do you say? I was like, no, I don't think that advice is good at the moment. You know that your father is a warrior. And David was a warrior. He was a mighty man of war. So he said, no, I don't, I don't believe that's good advice because your, fa your father is going to defeat you. He took all the great mighty men of valor with him. So your army... Is not and then if you get defeated uh, every every everybody's you know everybody's going to be scared and they're going to turn away from you so that's not I don't think that's a wise thing to do it's like yeah I think you're right that's not a wise thing to do so what happened was uh, but the Bible says um, this was God turning Ahithophel's uh, advice into foolishness right so what happened then was um, eventually they ended up um pursuing they ended up coming face to face the two armies like i said it's a long story so i'm trying to compress it so it doesn't take too it doesn't take uh too, it doesn't take too long so they ended up coming face to face with the armies right like the war was actually on and the war was really brutal so many men were killed and just different things but even before i i get to that that part i'm telling you this young man absalom he humiliated his father and dishonored his father he was having sexual relationships with his because his father left some of his concubines and wives back at the palace he was having uh, uh, affairs 
with his father's concubines in the in the sight of everyone and he was spreading all the type of rumors against his father and i mean just complete complete dishonor in you know in just the worst possible way that you can imagine so the two armies came face to face and then uh when david saw that okay this is the moment like this is the moment now we are going to we are going to war and anything can happen he gave i mean the, this man still loved his son so what he said to the commanders of his army he said be gentle with the young man absalom for my sake that means don't kill him whatever you do you know don't 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 kill him be gentle with him but um they didn't listen to him especially joab because joab was always the one vying for he was the one who advocated for for um for absalom to come back and just the way he turned against his father so what happened to absalom this is the end of this this is the end of of of, of dishonor this is what led the what this is what his dishonor led to he said uh, now Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule, and as the mule went under the thick branches of a of a large oak, Absalom's hair caught in the tree. At the beginning of the, of the the script, at the beginning of the story, he talked about how Absalom's hair was so beautiful and so long and just so lush and so that if they would cut it they would it would weigh so much. He said he was such a handsome man. There was no blemish. There was no flaw on him, and I think. No wonder why he got no wonder he got so proud because people were probably always uh praising him and saying uh all kinds of um uh, um think you know he, they were always praising him which really um brought up pride in his heart so his hair got caught in the tree he was left hanging mid air while the meal kept riding on and then Joab and you know the 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 other commanders that you know found, saw him they didn't kill him because they really listened to the king's um command that no we're not we're not going to kill the king's son but Joab he came and he said no we're going to kill this boy the, what he did was not right so he he uh they struck him down and they killed him this is the end of Absalom's life imagine how differently his life would have turned out how differently things would have gone had he just decided to come home his father welcomed him back home he decided to honor his father and serve his father just like the rest of the people were doing imagine how differently his life would have been now his testimony is written in the bible that thousands of years later we're still reading about his testimony and i am now here making an example of him as not the way to treat your parents not the way for me to treat my parents so the way we live our lives the way we choose to follow or def, not follow God's commandments will this will determine what kind of testimonies we that people are going to say about us so we have to ask ourselves what kind of testimony do I want people to tell about me do I want to be the prodigal son do I want to be Absalom or do I want to be yesterday I I I spoke of, of people like Esther and uh, and Ruth how they the, Ruth choose, chose to honor his her mother-in-law and how God brought about restoration in such a major way because of the way this woman humbled herself and chose to serve and honor her mother-in-law So what kind of testimonies do we want um written about us what are people going to be saying about us thousands of years from now hundreds of years from now when we get to heaven what is god going to say about us when we have to give an account of our lives we must honor our parents god's uh, uh, commandments are not negotiable thank you jesus amen thank you lord i have come to the end of our message today mm, i really i i i love the word of god I have to say I love the word of God and it's always such a pleasure for me to be preparing to prepare this um this content you know and uh thank you Jesus and we just believe in that as we are studying on the word of God God is going to open our eyes God is going to set us free God is going to melt any unforgiveness any bitterness any uh, rejection any 
dissatisfaction, discontentment in our hearts with our parents. And for those who have a good relationship with your parents, God is still going to do even a, a greater thing. Because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or ask. Whatever we're thinking, however, we, however good we think our relationship with our parents is, God is able to do more. He's able to take us to a greater level. Do you want to go to a greater level? I do. I want to go to a greater level in my obedience to God. Like I want to obey promptly, cheerfully, immediately without any uh, hesitation. And I told of my testimony how when I got saved and I got to understand about God's commandments and about the authority that parents have over our lives and this commandment that has a promise to it. And I picked up the phone and I called my dad. My dad's, my, my relationship with my dad before I got saved was, it was always strained. It was not crazy stuff happening, but it was, it was, it just was not what it was supposed to be. So I was like, no, God wants abundant life for me in all my relationships. So I'm going to do this because I want a loving, flourishing relationship with my dad. And now we have that. And I thank God. So I'm praying anybody who is in a difficult situation, I'm praying that the Lord will show you the same mercy and will give you the boldness to do what you need to do so you may get to that place of abundance in your relationship with your parents. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I encourage uh, you to share on Miss Lois Wall. Share celebrating your parents. Uh, post a video. Post a, um, you know, a praise report. Praise a testimony or, or even on your own wall. Anything that you can do to show honor to your parents. Amen. And thank you everybody for joining us and I will see you tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow is going to be our last day. Uh, so I am looking forward to see what the Lord is going to give us tomorrow. Amen. Thank you everybody and have a blessed day. Bye.